Hey everyone, today I want to, well first of all, I want to fill up this space on my page here. There's one mushroom missing and I found a mushroom that I really like the look of and it looks really gorgeous. Champignons de France, so the mushrooms of France and we have got figure one which is the Gliophorus Psita Sinus. I think that's what it's called and so I want to illustrate that one it's got a lovely bit of green a lovely bit of pink mostly it's quite pale I will see how intense I want the colors to be because you can see in the past previous um, examples here I like them to be quite vibrant so I might just amplify the uh, vividness of the color and the book is the Mushroom Botanical Art by Tashimutsu Fukiharu. And um, I have a book review for this book if you want to have a look of all kind of or majority of the um, uh, layout. And then it's also linked down below. So I will need some watercolors. And I have gone through my couple of palettes and I found the right colors. So I've got here the Iridian which is what I will use right here. And then I also have um, Opera Pink in this palette. It's this one here. Might be a bit too bright. So I might actually tone it down with another pink. I just realized I have a bunch and bunch of similar palettes where it's like the same colors, but uh, you know, slightly different. I should be using them up so I think the pink I should use is actually Rod and I Genuine. What I have realized is that all these beautiful pigment separating colors from Daniel Smith and others that I have in my collection they do nicely in the mushroom illustrations so I'm planning to put together a new color palette I think I'm going to use all of those colors just to have it in one space because right now I'm enjoying so much of this but I have to pull out like five different palettes to be able to bring together all the scattered around um, colors. Okay so I'm going to start with a drawing and what I like to draw with is the Graffa Gear 1000 pencil. pencil. This is 05 and inside I put a 2B lead, I believe. So let's start. I think I'm going to go with that. So the essence of the mushroom I'm looking here is basically slightly tapered tip and then sort of opens up a bit like that. And then we've got the leg. And then the grills underneath, they seem to be quite pronounced in this mushroom. So I'm just going to do that. What I tend to do next is the watercolor and then I finish with the pencil later. So, Let's start with a little bit of Viridian. Viridian is a good color because it's doesn't, it's not too dark, so the value never goes too deep. And I'm going to start by adding this color right at the edge of the mushroom, just like so. And then I will just basically spread it with a bit of water so we don't end up with a hard edge. And then here at the top, I'm going to use that rhodonite pink. And that will go right at the tip. So remember, we don't want it to be too bright. So I'm just going to blend the two together. And if it's too much water, just dry your brush on a piece of 
napkin or perhaps a flan or something that you have nearby. So if we're going to blend the two together, it will become like a purpley color. So I don't want to do that, although there is a possibility for that. So right now I'm just going to leave it as it is. And then I'm going to take my brush and kind of do these almost patterns, lifting patterns as are as they are visible in the mushroom, just these kind of lines. And then before things are fully dry, I'm just going to load my brush again with Viridian and just add that for intensity purpose. So then I think I might actually want to extend this pink slightly further down I'm taking most moisture out of my brush because otherwise it will make the color move too quickly and I'm just now pulling down the pink slightly more down and then softening wherever I need to soften it so there you go, so that's the color portion of the mushroom. In terms of the leg, sometimes I improvise, sometimes I kind of go with what's there. So what's there is basically like a nude colored leg with a bit of green there. So I think I'm going to go into buff titanium. Oftentimes I like to use either Moon Glow or Shadow Violet. So these two colors I love for the bottom of the mushroom. So I used it here and there. And then just barely color on here and then just softening things and pulling it up and leaving it at that. And then at the top I'm going to go in with the Viridian green actually adding a little bit of the creaminess to Viridian green and then just putting it out slightly mushrooms are a lot of fun to paint I personally find them very beautiful because they have this lovely structure. I wouldn't be able to enjoy painting mushroom as much if I didn't have these grills. So for example here you can't see them and honestly I didn't enjoy painting it as much as the others. Okay so here we go. I might just go over a little bit with buff titanium at the bottom just for the sake of combining these two colors together. So it's more of a smoother transition like that so that is it that's our leg done I should look up all the names of the mushrooms I call this a hat grills and the leg but I'm pretty sure that those are not the technical names okay so I'm going to wait for it to dry and then I'm going to add pencil to it Okay, so I have this little um, book here, Mushrooms by Collins Jam. They have loads of different books like that. They're pocket and they're great, not only to educate your children about all sorts of things, trees and butterflies and all sorts of uh, interesting things, but also for yourself as well is great. So right in the beginning, uh, we have the names of the mushroom parts. So this is not a hat it's a cap so I was close enough and the grills that I call them grills they are actually gills and then we have the stem so just like in the flower this part is called the ring and this is vulva hmm interesting and then there's also different gill characteristics which I probably won't be going into but there is five different ones all right so we've got the cap, 
gills, ring and stem. Okay, so looking at the gills here, they have this beige type of color. Let me see if I can bring it a bit closer. So it's got like a beige type of a color here. Now, I don't know how true to reality this is represented or is just um, like a simplified type of an illustration, but it's got deep gills here. So they're quite enlarged. And that's what I'm going to try and do. In the previous illustrations, I would just use one colored pencil and just kind of make those lines. However, today I'll try something new and I will use two colors of the pencil to create that sort of dimension effect. So I have got a darker color, which is one of those, and I need a beige color. And the beige, I think I will use this one. It's nice and warm. And it's the brown ochre 50%. These are, by the way, the Caran d'Ache pencils. I just realized when I started creating in this way that having my pencils stored like this isn't working for me anymore because I need that precise color. And to find it, I need them layered out flat. So yeah, I might consider either another one of those uh, pencil cases to like store pencils in or just have them in trays when I'm working but I don't know things are changing <laughs> and the other thing is I will be organizing my bookcases here and moving most of my books to the living room where it's a long room and it will have a library part of it and like a chill uh, reading area basically that will open up a lot of spaces in my shelves here and then I can move out things and hopefully feel less uh, not cluttered I wouldn't say this is cluttered this is all art supplies that I need but it just there is so much space that I can um, tidy it away in and then hopefully the very overdue promised studio tour that should happen after that because there's no point in me sharing you something now that I will be changing soon. So to work with pencil and with the mushroom gills I need to have a very very sharp point and I find that the luminance holds a beautiful point. So what we're going to do is first of all create these gills by basically First, I'm going to draw it with a darker pencil and then I'm going to fill it in with the lighter and then I'm going to go back into dark pencil to do the shadowing. So we have a number of pencils here and the one I have gone is with sepia 50%. So the way these gills are, they start from the leg and they go up like this and they're all very much curled and they're not close together because they're like I said before they're the enlarged type of a gill and so therefore we should have a lot of fun playing with creating dimension so that's that you can see how much more darker it is compared to the other ones and then I'm going to add a little bit of color just in between like so, trying not to go over the dark line because that would blend it a little bit and we don't want it. We want it to stand out nice and dark. So I'm just adding this yellow color and then it'll be fun to just add a bit of shadowing. Okay, so this is just a flat layer of a color. Not much is happening. Again, always keep looking at the picture. So basically, we're going to add darkness around here and then darkness around there. So I'm just going to thicken up the corners like so. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of shadowing 
and then blending out into the rest of the color like so the way I have been working with pencils lately is different to how I was before before I just like pencils to push on quite hard and get the most of the color uh, but now I'm kind of enjoying the slight blend and if I need to add that dimension it's a lot more effective than just having a strong line blending it a little bit and softening you very quickly create that dimension okay and then darkening it inside here as well so you'll see soon it will start looking like Basically, the thickest point is the middle here. Is anyone watching the Umbrella Academy? There's another very interesting uh, series. So, there you go. And then I feel like adding a touch of red into this. I want to say red, I mean like a brown. So I always find that this is now, when you're painting and you're looking at colors, there is always a time where you... Okay, so I had to stop because my <clears throat> memory card and my battery all at once got full and empty so what I have done is I have added a little bit of red and now I'm considering to so this was russet and that will help to get the color popping a little bit more so this is where I am trying to uh, inject my own style into things so then we have Herculanum red which is a lovely pink so I'm not really enjoying this beige here so I'm just going to just add more of the pink instead. So usually I don't spend that much time on the gills. The gills are the quickest that I work on. But today I just want to try something new and see if I like it or not. In the past I kind of would have that pre-assumption that I wouldn't like something. And I wouldn't go with it these days. I'm thinking, well, I will learn something from the experience. So I'll just go with it. And then I'm going to go back into this dark color. And just add a little more definition. Okay, so I'll leave it at that. Then I want to go into similar color to that. And at the moment I don't have anything. So I'll go with like a turquoise blue. I ordered a bunch of green pencils to add to my collection. They haven't arrived yet. But basically what I'm going to do is I wish it was more green. In fact, what I could do. I've got the perfect color just in the wrong pencil. So this is the barrel green, but it's a water soluble pencil. So what I can do is add that and then just intensify it a little bit more, right? So it's more kind of defined. And I'm going to add a little bit of water just a touch to melt the pigment like so and then just dotting it around because remember we don't want to have a straight line here but we want to have more of a definition and like a pop to the color you could even go with something a lot like further dark so i could do let's see i've got a perfect color for that 
which is a dark sub green. And that should go into here. I'm probably best when it's completely dry. Yeah, I'll wait for it to dry. There we go, now it's going on quite smoothly. I'm just going to do this at the very corners like that. And then with a touch of water, just blending it. So another thing I would do is adding a little bit of definition to the stem. So in this case, it's just a little bit of color. You might need to move to a lighter brush or smaller brush. And then just very lightly blending it like so. I don't want any green at the bottom here. So you can see it just very lightly, but added that stronger color. Oftentimes I would also add it on the other side because that creates a dimension. So it sort of makes the stem go around rather than just a flat thing. So here I'm not going to go that far down. And if it's pulling out too much color, then I just brush my, or wash my brush rather in between more often. There we go. If there is a too strong of a line, these pencils are great in blending. So just do that. In terms of a pink, sorry for the noise outside, there's a massive lorry. In terms of the pink, I could consider adding a really bright pink. So something like that, see if it pops a little bit. So you can see it does do a bit of that, but just not over the, the entire thing, just a little bit on top. Okay, so I think the lorry has gone now a little bit, so I can continue. There's something with the gill here that I want to work just a little bit more on. So I'm going to add a bit of shadowing just at the bottom to create again that dimension that these are curling and they're round so I'm just adding a warm brown and this is a burnt sienna just going all under the gill edge and just blending you can leave a mushroom illustration as simple as you desire or you can really hone in and enjoy all this detailing and blending and all of that good stuff All right, our mushroom is done. Let me bring you up closer. And that is the mushroom. So it's a little bit more actually realistic. It pops a lot more um, with the color underneath compared to these ones, which are more simplified. And I, I don't know at the moment, I can't tell you whether I love this one more than the others but I definitely like um, kind of like um, the color to be mostly on the cap rather than the gills but it's nice it's been a good fun to add a little bit of dimension there so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I will see you next time thanks for watching <laughs>